Welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the Know with Juanita. We're glad that you're joining us for our show again this week. Like I always say, we're very happy that there are people like you out there that are interested in the issues that are happening in the nine cities in Northwest Community Television Viewing Area. It's important for good government to have citizens that care and follow issues and let their mayors and city councils know what they feel on particular issues. So each week, if you haven't watched our program before, we'll bring on people from one of the nine cities that can help update us on what are the current and future issues that are going to be happening in each of these cities. And from time to time, we'll have other groups that affect all of our cities, like we'll have the state legislators or some of the community groups that affect all of us. So we're very glad to have you with us tonight. And tonight, we're going to be looking into Robin Steele's issues. We're very happy to have George Selman with us again. You've been on our show before, but it's been a little while, right? It, it has been right. a little while, but I'm happy to be back. So we're glad to have you with and update us on what's happening in the Robbinsdale area. Now, you were on, but it was a little while ago, but you already know that I'm going to say, why don't you introduce yourself out to our water audience? Let them know a little bit about you okay. and kind of how you got involved in the city council. I'd be happy to. Uh, my name is George Selman, and I've, uh, I represent the third ward of Robbinsdale mm -hmm. on the city council. Mm -hmm. And I'm just at the uh, beginning of my third term on the ah. city council. And I, my involvement uh, with city government and just local community efforts right. in general really stems back to my time on, in the Robbinsdale JCs uh -huh. and uh, developing some community service uh, efforts through just the, just the JC efforts. Right. And then eventually I got too old to be a JC and I became <laughs> a Robbinsdale Lion. Ah. But along the way I got involved with a lot of different things like uh, our city summer festival Whiz Bang oh, Days. Right, right. Uh, I was, I've been a member of the Whiz Bang Days mm -hmm. Committee for over 20 years now and I was president of the festival for ah. three years and uh, we'll talk more about Whiz, Whiz Bang later. Right. The, um, I serve on, uh, as I served on the Planning Commission and mm -hmm. the uh, Park Rec and Forestry Commission you know, prior to being on City Council. I also, uh, while on City Council, have been heavily involved in the Botano Light Rail Corridor. Oh, right. In fact, right. I've been on the Community Advisory Committee for ah. 12 years oh. um, uh, working on that, on that project. And I also serve on things like the Northwest uh, Community Television oh, Cable Commission. Right, uh, right. Which I'm very happy yeah. to be one of Robbinsdale's representatives ah. of, uh, as each city has uh, right. two members on the, on the commission. And, and it's things like that that I've been able to do um, with my, my spare time uh, <laughs> o over the years uh, that yeah. uh, really make it so I feel like I get a chance to make Robbinsdale a, a great place it is to ah, live. Right. Yeah, that you get to be part of, of what's happening and as you move forward, right? Exactly. Yeah, I always say to people, if they are in thinking about getting elected to something, you get a voice and you get a vote That's so that right. you're part of what's happening. That's right. Sometimes we vote right. Ah, <laughs> right. Well, we're going to move into an issue that's getting a bit of press and people might not clearly understand what's happening. I know I just have a general knowledge. But i got to make sure I say the right railroad. BNSF, Burlington Northern, Northern Santa, Fe. Santa Fe Railroad, and the Canadian Pacific Railroad CP, have, have a spot in Crystal where the two tr tracks are close together and they're looking at making a connection so both railroads can use both tracks, I think. That's pretty close, okay. uh, as I understand it. And I, I probably only know a little bit more okay. than you do. But, <laughs> I have, but uh, you know, it's uh, basically in, in Crystal, uh, there's a, the area where these two tracks basically intersect. Right. And with their, the Canadian Pacific line is the one that runs east and west. Uh -huh. And the, Berlin, the BNSF line runs uh, north and south. Mm -hmm. And that's always been this uh, lightly used line that's, that has a train once a day during right. the week that might be six or eight cars long. 
and it kind of lumbers through town. And it's it's almost. I, you know, I've lived there for 35 years. I cannot ever remember having to wait for the time. Oh, train okay, to right. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's more of an amenity. Right. And it, the kids think it's neat that this train yeah, goes through so right. slow and nice. And and it's really not, a, it doesn't disrupt business. It doesn't disrupt uh, the city's ability to provide safety and emergency services. It's uh, it's just this this train that goes through right. carrying, carrying goods up and down the, the corridor north to south. And what the the... With the advent of the oil coming out of the Bakken right, oil fields up, right. up north, um, we've got these huge trains that are that are um, putting undue stress on the on the rail lines in the entire oh, region yes. and, and right. statewide and beyond. It's a right. really a, it's it's a multi-state, perhaps even close to a national Probably. issue. Probably, and they are looking to relieve some of the local pressure by putting basically a right turn ramp off of the CP line onto this BNSF line, right. where now all of a sudden we would have between 10, maybe 15 trains a day that are 100 right. cars long, uh, hauling most likely uh, very uh, flammable and toxic materials right. Right. through our small residential area and, and very near our downtown. Right, now the, the connection point I think is a lot, along West Broadway where you cross over the tracks near the cemetery, right? That's very right. close to it, yes. Okay. So that's kind of where, where all the auto, sh auto uh, body shops are and yeah. car, the car, used car dealerships. Yeah, so that we can let people know about it. Now, when and how did your city learn about this issue? Well, you know, we were at a uh, legislative breakfast in uh, Crystal. Okay. And we were there with many of our neighbors right. and, and, uh, and friends from the other councils and our state representatives and the folks in Crystal learned that the railroad was trying to, to secure ownership of some ah. of the properties that are going to make this change right. possible. And through some research, discovered that this was what their plan was. That was ah. the first any of us had heard of it, and that was in January. Okay. So nobody, you had to kind of deduce it from other things happening. Nobody came to tell you or said this is going to change in your community. That's correct. It's, it's all... Uh, they just the railroad works with uh, as I've as I've come to learn they okay. work with very little oversight from local governments and regional and state government virtually have with very few exceptions any say at all ah. and it's really they're all completely controlled by the federal government and even within the federal government uh -huh. there's a it's a very small network of people that can influence ah. what the railroad can and can't do and we're still learning a lot right so what kind of effect would this change have then on like your traffic or homeowners or businesses or emergency services? You can kind of rule it out for us. Well, it's, uh, you know, we're still figuring out all the, okay. all the bad things because okay. that's a pretty long list. Um, the good things is a really short list because okay. we can't think of any good things that, are, <laughs> that can come of this for us. Right. Uh, and not just us in Robbinsdale, but, oh, us, right. but us in this region. Right. Um, you know, it's a... Uh, a situation where we have four railroad uh, grade crossings uh -huh. in Robbinsdale. This, these trains are so long that for up to as much as maybe five minutes, uh, three and sometimes all four of them will be blocked and closed. Ah. Um, we have a, a fire department that's in, and a police department that's centrally located near right. our downtown. Right. And it's really centrally located within our, our city mm -hmm. by, it's probably four blocks from the geographic center of our city. Right. It's that close. And it allows us two immediate crossings across the railroad um, with, within blocks of the, ah. the fire department. Uh, they don't have to go all the way to 36th. Oh, right. Uh, they don't have right. to go all the way up near the public works facility mm -hmm. up uh, West Broadway to get across. And if there's a fire alarm on either side, it doesn't matter which. Right. Um, some, many of our firefighters will not be able to get to the firehouse to ah, make the call. Yeah, not good. Um, if, or if the ones that can get there may not be able to get to the side of the, of the tracks where the call oh, is. Oh, right, right. And it's more than just fires. It's, it's ambulance service. Right. It's police response. It's uh, things like pedestrian traffic. Oh, you know, right. Sacred Heart has a, an elementary school. Oh, yeah, very close. And with yeah. many, I don't know the exact numbers, but... Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure more than half of the kids there walk to school. Right. 
and it's uh, you know the prospect of them crossing these now very busy tracks ah. that uh, and their playground is against the railroad's right of way. Oh, it's right. a fenced in area. Right. Yeah, you're right. Right there, and you know if anything goes wrong, you know that it's not even nobody has to describe the results. Right. And and the uh, you know those are some of the long term right. impacts. The the biggest short term impact we've noticed is uh, the the unbelievable amount of staff time that oh. has been spent on this in the last six weeks. Sure. Uh, this came out of the blue. Right. We've, we all are, all of our staffs are very busy and they work very hard to make, all, to, to, to provide all the answers to all the whims all of our right. city councils right. uh, in, the, right. in the area come up with. And uh, they have done a absolute spectacular job working together to come up with a response to, mm -hmm. to this, and it's a, it's a lot of moving parts, and uh, it, it's too deep to, to tunnel under. Right. It's far too expensive to tunnel uh, to go above right. and bridge over, because it would have to stay up in the air virtually through the entire downtown. It'd be oh, like right. The right. great railroad wall that would run <laughs> through Robbinsdale, and of course yeah. that's not acceptable. Um, you know, and then you know as it as it uh, continues down through. 36 that goes into Sahaki Park and Mary Hills Nature Area in Golden Valley and then down toward the railroad yards right. in, in uh, Minneapolis. And it's, you know, if you think of a of a unfortunate disaster, you oh, know, right. and I'm sure the right. railroad, railroad and their, their staff and their safety people work feverishly, it's m probably a lot like aircraft. You never hear about the landings right. that go well. Right. You only right. hear about the bad <laughs> ones and right. they, they go millions and millions of miles. And it's, so it's not just the blast zone. I mean, right. we, you know, our staff actually took an aerial photo okay. of the explosion in, in Canada that oh, killed nearly right. 50 oh, people. Oh, right, right. And they and they they put on an aerial map of our downtown uh -huh. area. They they draw do, two dotted lines. Of right. This is where the blast zone is. Uh huh. Our downtown is virtually leveled. Oh, Broadway right. Broadway Court Apartments, right. the school. On the other side, dozens and dozens and dozens oh. of homes. I mean, it's, there's no good place for anything like that to happen. Right. It's a really bad. There are there are less bad places. Right. And those are those are rural and outstate areas that have minimal impact. Right. And then, what is the city of Robbinsdale trying, or hoping, or maybe exploring about what you could do about this issue? Well, what we're what we're really what we've discovered is there isn't a whole lot okay. we can do. I mean, okay. that's that's the short answer and the long answer. Um, our mayor was uh, at the day of this taping was at the state capitol with other mayors um, uh, testifying before this Senate Transportation Committee okay. with the support of uh, Senator Rest um, to speak against this issue and, and speak, uh, ask for uh, support uh, towards steps that will help us um, have some element okay. of influence perhaps and, and a little bit of control. And those ex efforts, it sounds like, were successful. Oh, okay. Um, I don't really uh, have a lot of details right. beyond that, but we got a little bit of good news today. Mm -hmm. uh, but the biggest effort we're, we're putting forth as a city and, and our neighboring communities are too, is we're imploring people to reach out to their federal elected officials. Ah. Um, all of us have uh, template letters that they can modify and craft to their own situation okay. and their own impact. Uh, and the addresses of all these elected officials and to the um, the federal uh, surface tra transportation board and they're the ones that ultimately will decide decide if there's if there needs to be an environmental ah. impact study done on this okay. on this corridor before this type of a change so that people that are concerned from Robbinsdale and wider could get some information on who to contact Yes, exactly. Because we're always get, asking people to get involved. So yeah, this, this is, is, and you know, you, we always hear, you know, many of us are handed a letter say, saying, here, just all you got to do is put your name and right. address on here or sign this okay. petition. Um, if you live in one of these communities, or even, you know, if a person lives in New Hope or Plymouth, oh, right, but, but right. drives through these communities, right. you know, when, they're, when this train blocks 42nd Avenue, for up to five minutes, right. that the traffic backup will be on the other side of Highway 100. Right. The 100 ramps will be backed up. Um, it'll back up all the way to mm -hmm. the parkway to the east. 
uh, near the, beyond the flagpole. I mean, and, and by the time it all gets cleared out and back to normal, there's going to be another train coming right, through. Right. And that's just, it, it, it's a complete change in our way of life. Right. Not, it's not just about the blast zone and the uh, potential uh, toxic right, spills. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a terrible influence on all of our cities. It's going to impact our ability to enjoy and use our downtown. It's going to impact our ability to have future development because people aren't going to want to oh, develop right. near this. Right. You know, this, is a, this is a landmark decision for, oh, our, for our communities. And the one thing that every citizen can do is write a letter to, to uh, Senator Franken, uh, to Keith Ellison, um, to Senator Klobuchar, to President Obama. Oh, I mean, right. it, you know, there's right. no limit to the people we we right. can we can write to. We need to get the word out that this is not a, a casual decision. We, it's not right. just that we don't want this in our backyard. This is a dreadful impact oh, on right. our region. Right. Right. So we'll encourage those of you out there that are concerned about this issue to take the time. You can get the addresses from. Uh, all of our city, city All of our city websites would let you know what the addresses are or email addresses. And do take the time to let people know what you think of the possible repercussions of this decision. Well, and it's, uh, it's one of those things that will take probably less than five or ten minutes to oh, do. Right, right. To, send all, to send letters out to all the people that, right. are, that you, you provided email at, and, land, and land addresses right. for. Um, you'll spend more than that amount of time waiting for these trains to go oh, by yeah, in, in a day. Easily, easily, right. So we'll encourage you to do that. Please do. Now, something that's been in the process for a while now is a grocery cooperative because Rainbow closed and then people were disturbed because there's no grocery store around. And so there's a group of citizens, not the city council, a group of citizens that are looking to form a cooperative grocery store. Maybe you can update us a little bit on what's happened. Yeah, and, and uh, when you told me you wanted me to talk about this, this is another <laughs> thing I had to do a little bit of homework on. Right. Uh, the, the folks that are, are doing this are, are, are it is a completely um, citizen-driven right. uh, operation. Our mayor and uh, council member Backen have been involved with some of their meetings and uh -huh. attended some of their meetings and when you know we can't all go to everything so we kind of oh, we kind of divide and right. conquer a little right. bit um, and it's it allows us to um, be more involved and more informed uh -huh. so I, I in order to prepare for tonight I did uh, talk to them a little bit ah, the, 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 not you. the council and the mayor right. but uh, right. the people that are organizing oh, right. it. and they've they started in August of 2013, okay. uh, shortly after Rainbow closed, which I think was uh -huh. in April of that year, and they've had they've had a, a variety of meetings, um, just to to garner support and enthusiasm for right. the project, and it's a uh, it's amazing how much a grocery store is part of a community. Oh, right. And, you know, because right. we have other shopping opportunities. Yeah. We've got Olmsteads and Crystal. We've got Cub and in, in Crystal. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of other opportunities right. for us, not too very far away, mm -hmm. but that rainbow was was a, a part of our community oh, in, right. in Robbinsdale, right. and it's it's important to people that have limited transportation ah. uh, availability right. um, or or virtually none, and mm -hmm. they they walk or ride bikes everywhere. Yeah. You know, they still eat and shop too right. at grocery stores, right. and uh, it, so this, this is more than casually important uh -huh. to them. Um, and it's uh, you know there's a these folks have really been um, working hard to garner support and right. enthusiasm, and there is a lot of it. But they've really reached a point now where it's time to have the rubber meet the road ah, a little bit from the right. community. Right. And what so what they're doing is they're having a membership drive. Uh huh. And I'm gonna just uh, to become a member. You can go online to www.robbinsdalefoodcoop.org. Okay. And there are links to that from our from our city website. Right. And you can become a member of the co-op. It's it costs one hundred dollars. Okay. And it it can be paid all at once, or it can be handled with as much as a twenty dollar down payment. Okay. And it can be paid off. You can print the form off there. Send that and your check to the Robbinsdale Food Co-op, PO Box two two zero three five. Robbinsdale, Minnesota, okay. 55422. 
And as I was talking to them, I said, how many members do you need? And their right. goal is, and I'm, I'm referencing a letter that's going out right. to the greater community right. very soon. Um, their goal is 400 members. Okay. And they're, they're a far cry from that now, uh -huh. but this is, now is the kind of the time as this evolves where the membership piece is kind of the right. next domino right. that needs to fall over. And uh, they've, uh, so they're looking to get 400 people from the area, not just Robbins. Yeah, I was gonna say, it could be the whole area of people that Correct. are interested in that kind of grocery shopping. Yeah. And I'm, I'm happy to report my shopping experience is very limited. Okay. I have a wonderful wife that is much better <laughs> at it than me and has, operates under the theory that I don't shop, I go buy stuff. Uh -huh. So it works better for both of us <laughs> if she does that, and so I don't have a lot of experience. Okay. But it, the one thing I do know in, and I've learned is that the co-op experience is very unique and different oh, yes. than, yes. than the, uh, just the going to one of the big rainbow cub, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a very uh, specific experience to the people that, that own and operate it, right. which are, is the co-op. Right. And, I, and that, as I was doing, was talking to them, I said, well, what happens if, to the money if this doesn't happen? Right. You know, it, unfortunately, it, that is a possibility we need to consider. Right. And they, they told me that the funds are collected uh, and placed in a trust. Okay. And if, if, if the, the unfortunate event happens where it is not, uh, that does not come to right. fruition, those funds are all refunded to ah. the people. So it's, uh, you know, it's a chance uh, if you if you want a co-op in Robbinsdale, this is what you've got to do. This is the time. Do this right after right. you send your letters to the federal officials right, about right. the railroad. <laughs> yeah, we've got things for people to do yeah, tonight. Yeah, we're, right. we're going to probably have to have a, a task list summary at the yeah. end of this. Yeah, but but it but it is important for people to know that this is the time when if they really want to see it move forward, then they need to become part of it. Right, and, and you know, they, they've worked hard. I mean, you know, we've got different events within Robbinsdale virtually year mm -hmm. round. One of the biggest ones is the meet and greet where we uh -huh. close West Broadway. And, right, right. And a, a large percentage mm -hmm. of our community come, gathers together right on West Broadway and all the businesses and organizations have, have booths where people can come and businesses donate. Uh, oh, right. And the Chamber of Commerce really or drives the, this thing and they, uh, they donate uh, door prizes for, for people. And the co-op's been there for two years. I mean, uh -huh. they've been they've been there promoting the co-op right. and having the, these meetings with uh, in local churches just to to garner oh, the support right. and organize right. themselves right. and create the organization. And they have a board of directors uh -huh. now, and they're a well-respected group of citizens. No city council members even on the uh -huh. board. So right. So if you're thinking about wanting to go shop at a co-op store and you're this is something that resonates with you, take the time to go on to uh, Robbinsdale's website, website because we're listing that from time to time and find the information about getting actively involved in buying a membership. I would add to it and all, and all of these things on the website. Uh -huh. um, if you have trouble finding stuff, click on the city council part uh -huh. and contact me, okay. contact any okay. of the other city council okay. members or the mayor, call city hall, the answers are there. We are actually redoing our website, ah, and okay. that rollout will happen probably later okay. this year. Um, so it's going to be a lot more user okay. friendly than it is today. Now we'll move on to something a little different. Is that Whizbang Days? It's Robinsdale's summer celebration. We referenced it before, but you have an ambassador program. Now, how long have the Whizbang Days been going on? We've got the city going for 100 and what 23 years. So, how long have the Whizbang celebrations been going? This is year uh, 68, I uh -huh. believe, and uh, it's so it's whatever the math is backwards okay, right, to that. Right. But it was it actually started out as as Robbinsdale Goodwill Days. Oh, okay. And it was uh, it it has it evolved into Whizbang Days because um, Fawcett Publications originated in, right. in Robbinsdale and uh, produced Whizbang Magazine, mm -hmm. which is a rather risque mm -hmm. uh, illustrated <laughs> magazine for its day. Um, and it was provided to uh, military servicemen um, as just a way to help them uh -huh. pass the time right. and, and entertain them. And they, uh, you know, Fawcett Publications grew to do all kinds of right. different things and, and uh, that's where whiz bang comes mm -hmm. from is whiz bang days. 
And but the ambassador program, the what ambassador is that? program has been a part of Whiz Bang Days for, uh -huh. for its entire life. And it's what we do every year is we select um, nearly always three okay. uh, young ladies to represent Robbinsdale, uh, Miss Robbinsdale, and two ambassadors that are or princesses that are uh -huh. equal in, in, in rank. And uh, then they also have junior ambassadors, and we usually have between two and four of them. And they, they participate throughout the festival in... Uh, and, there, and there's judges that are okay. from outside of our community that come in right. to help us, or they don't, don't help us, they select uh -huh. the representatives based okay. on their experience, their applications, uh -huh. uh, their backgrounds, and, and how they um, do things like public speaking right. and things like that. And, it's, uh, and then once uh, they are crowned on the Sunday of our four-day festival, uh, right before, it's the second to the last thing ah. that happens before the fireworks. Right. It's the, the fireworks are the last thing. And they, uh, they get crowned and then they represent Robbinsdale throughout Minnesota and Wisconsin uh -huh. at different festivals and events throughout that entire year. And so that's going on right now? The, the application, application process, process is on right, right now. Right. And I'm going to, I went to the Whiz Bang Days website, which uh -huh. is also linked uh, to our city website. And junior ambassadors are first and second grade students uh, in 2015 and okay. 16. They don't have to go to school in Rob, they can be part of 281. Okay. A lot of people don't know that. They think Robbinsdale Whiz Bang Days ambassadors live and work oh, in Robbinsdale. That's completely the, untrue. Okay. Anywhere that 281 Is geographic that right? area, you're eligible to, to be part of this. Um, if you're if you live outside of that area, but your parents work or you work uh -huh. it, for the senior ambassadors um, in Robbinsdale, you can be part of this and you can apply. And the, the website is uh, is very uh, informative as far as it's the the biggest thing is the time commitment. Mm -hmm. There's there's a lot of parades. Okay. There's a lot of that parades to, to go to, involved, and yeah. you're expected to be, and you're agreeing oh, right, to be at right, most of when them. You go. So you need to do your homework and right. study up on that, and make sure it's something that meets with your family's lifestyle and and capabilities. Right. But the uh, yeah, it's one year of a child's life, right. and I can speak from experience because my oldest daughter um, was Miss Robbinsdale ah, in 2000, cool. 2001, and uh, she didn't win the first time. Uh -huh. She. she uh, she was uh, one of the ones that didn't get any get right. me a crown for anything. Well, she right. decided she was going to try again uh -huh. because the experience helped her oh, so much. What? Well, I want to thank you so much. Thank you, Anita. We're a lot of things going in Robbinsdale. There so are. We're glad to have you updating us, and we'll ask those of you out there to uh, Watch next week for part two of Robbinsdale's Issues. And if you have any questions or some of the areas resonated with you, uh, be sure to get in contact with George Selman or to look on your city's website to contact the federal officials about the railroad issue. And we're glad that you're with us now and we'll hope you join us next week. Bye.